And that's where I want to bring in my good friend and co-host, Jeff Small, president of Arbor Financial Services, a retirement income store in Melbourne, Florida. Jeff is also author of the Amazon best-selling book, Turning Financial Planning Right Side Up. But uh, most importantly, Jeff, I am jealous. I saw all those Facebook posts from last weekend, those sailfish you caught in the cold weather. That was awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. We also want to bring in another very good friend of the income generation, John Nigerian, co-founder of MarketRebellion.com. John is an options trader, and he's also co-author of the book, Follow the Smart Money. John, thanks so much for being back with us. Jeffrey, David, thank you very much. Great to be with you guys. Yeah, so gosh, we were talking just a little bit over a month ago, and you know, you're, you said, okay, I do believe we're gonna end 2021 in the markets higher than we came in. And you also said, we'll probably have a small correction of sorts in the first half of the year at some point. But I know that was all based upon our assumption that the Georgia Senate runoff race was gonna stay red. And of course that didn't change. And now we got this thing, this dreaded blue wave and Wall Street doesn't seem to care. But does it change any of your projections or predictions for 2021 in the markets? Um, it does. It changes the sectors, David, that I really am focused on right now. Um, so energy, I think, was due to outperform just because it had been shellacked. And I mean, you know, the old fossil fuel energy and people might scratch their head and say, why? Um, just because demand is coming back. And that's the biggest reason, it's supply and demand. They cut back on supply dramatically globally. Uh, and now demand is starting to come back with the vaccination rollout, it'll be bigger. But I think what I would not have picked as big, and now I am pretty big in, are the alternative energies. Um, solar, wind, um, fuel cell, plug. I mean, there are so many stocks uh, Jeff and Dave, that uh, I, I think we'll get a lot more play because of a slight lean to the uh, blue side in Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not an overwhelming one. And for that reason, I think there'll be good spending, uh, but I don't think it'll be as out of control as it would have been if it was a true blue wave that they predicted November 3rd. Well, you know, John, I see the market right now as focusing only on what can go right it's not focusing on what could go wrong over the next three or four months. And so what are some of the things that could derail or stifle this boundless optimism that we're experiencing? Um, biggest one is, uh, you know, lack of uptake for the virus, for the vaccines. That's the single biggest. The next after that would be, I guess, a, a significant pickup in either inflation or bonds um, as far as the yield, and that's already starting to happen. The bonds are already starting to move. So your point's well taken, Jeff. We could easily see um, the bonds, you know, it's always the rate of change. So whether we want to refer to that with the Greek term gamma or convexity or anything else, um, when, when you start seeing an acceleration um, and it's going beyond what would be otherwise normal. I think that's something that we have to be concerned about. It's not out of control at all yet, but that is the most likely culprit, at least so far, are people don't take enough of the vaccine and the Fed gets nervous as these rates and inflation start making a comeback. Well, I'd like to add to that, John. I see that maybe the tapering of the QE programs, the quantitative easing by the Fed programs coming offline a little bit, and then the end of the stimulus as the global economy starts to unfold from this virus and starts to vaccinate. So those things are kind of working against each other, but I think we got to be vigilant, don't you think? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, as you said accurately, people are really focused on all the good that can happen, and we're all rooting for that, of course. Uh, as Americans and globally, too, we want to get people vaccinated. We want the world going back to normal. But uh, if we start seeing demand pick up dramatically and uh, the 10 year bond versus uh, the two year, that spread is at the widest it's been since 2017. And that steepness of the yield curve is implying, uh, you know, that we're, we could see that big jump uh, in interest rates, not to 2 percent, but if we get to one and a half quickly rather than slowly, that's a problem. That's a big, sure, sure, a strong momentum in the wrong direction. So uh, when you come back, we want to talk about some other sectors, maybe some sectors that might be a little more problematic under the Biden presidency. So John, Jeff, don't go away. We'll continue our discussions right after the break. 
We'll be right back right here on the Income Generation. Welcome back to the Income Generation. I'm David Scranton, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Jeff Small, as well as our good friend, good friend of the Income Generation, John Nigerian. Thanks for sticking around, gentlemen. Thank you, David. So, so John, I know one of the things that I think about, too, is some of these, uh, these, these changes that are happening right now in the actual virus. And if a change, uh, if we get to a point where, uh, you know, maybe the vaccines are no longer effective, some of the treatments are no longer effective, you know, that's kind of a, a big picture thing we, we have to worry about. But I don't want to spend too much time on that. I, 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 let's assume that doesn't happen. Where do you think under a Biden presidency, we will see some weak sectors? Uh, financials are one thing that I worry about because of regulation a little bit, although financials have such momentum now, it's hard to think that that'll change in the next year or two. What are your thoughts? Well, um, I, I still think big tech, uh, not for uh, some of the reasons other folks are saying, but I think big tech uh, is problematic for any president, new or uh, sitting. And I think that'll be addressed a little. In other words, I think some of the monopoly power these guys have uh, eventually is going to have to be addressed. But in the short term, uh, I, I don't see him leaning against the president, leaning against a lot of uh, the, the market participants in a serious way. I mean, I think overall, that the money that's about to flow into the system from the third stimulus, because mm -hmm. we just passed the second one a couple weeks ago, uh, from this third stimulus that's likely to come early in President Biden's uh, administration, mm -hmm. I think that is more than enough to uh, uh, counteract any stocks that are having a little bit of an experience uh, worrying about what sort of uh, additional regulations might come down, whether that's uh, banking or whether it's big tech. I think both survive just fine. How about health care? Do you think that uh, that Biden won't be able, because we're, we're, we're kind of close to 50-50, that maybe he won't be able to lean that far left and, and maybe health care stocks will, will be OK? Or do you think otherwise? Well, um, when you look at uh, Blue Cross and a bunch of the big health care players, United Health. One of the best things in the world for them is, of course, uh, what was endorsed by the Supreme Court and uh, uh, Justice Roberts with that ruling about the Obamacare and ACA. I mean, those guys have absolutely profited in a huge way from forcing Americans to buy insurance. And I think mm -hmm. that just continues, David, um, mm -hmm. perhaps with a little more emphasis uh, because it has not been struck down and four years of Donald Trump weren't able to remove it. So I think in all likelihood, a lot of those healthcare stocks will do much better. In fact, some of them where they had procedures that were put off because of COVID, this is not related to the pre incoming president, but a lot of those procedures, whether it's, you know, Stryker or any of the implant device makers right. and things like that, I think a lot of those surgeries get done and a lot of demand increases again for those uh, medical device makers. I heard a stock tip in there, John. Did you say Stryker? I did, sir. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to write that down real quick here. Dave, call our traders. Anyway, um, so something's been bugging me lately, John, and it really revolves around Bitcoin. Um, I guess now the theme with Bitcoin is if Bitcoin goes up, the market goes up, I guess, because that's bringing in buyers to both and people want to diversify. What's your take? Um, I think it's a combination of uh, you know, supply and demand moves markets, guys. And uh, the supply of new Bitcoins just got cut in half May of last year. They call that a halving. And that is, of course, for those miners, the people that approve all the transactions that go on. They're called nodes all around uh, the uh, blockchain. Um, their rewards for winning those uh, computerized games, if you will, the authorization of that uh, spending, um, that reward is much smaller now than it was pre-May of 2020. So that means demand remaining the same would cause prices to rise because you've got less supply. You couple that with more uh, folks with an uh, opportunity to 
invest in Bitcoin because PayPal endorses it uh, with Venmo and because Square endorses it with uh, their cash app. That pushed it to almost 200 and some odd million accounts have access to Bitcoin that some of them perhaps had it before, but now everybody with a little extra in their stimulus check could say, you know what, I'm gonna buy 200 bucks. I'm gonna buy 500 bucks. I don't imagine that everybody just says, I'm gonna buy a $34,000 Bitcoin. They're gonna buy this much of a $34,000 Bitcoin. And I think Jeff, that helps lift um, that uh, asset class. That's amazing explanation, John. Thank you for that. But why does the market go up with Bitcoin going up? Why? What's the correlation? I don't think there is any. I think it's just uh, the uh, uh, the demand for Bitcoin um, is going up because of Fed stimulus and because of central bank stimulus around the world. People worrying that their currency is worth less uh, because of that money printing. And I think it's an alternative. And a lot of rebels out there like to own alternatives and this one's one that's really, you know, it was up 300% last year um, and it started off this year with a bang as well. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more people uh, taking little tiny bites at first uh, and then more institutions getting involved and in. those are much bigger bites. It's essentially the new gold, if you will, as far in terms of how investors are looking at it. So unfortunately, we're almost out of time. We only have 30 seconds left, but, but real quick, best advice for our income generation members in 2021, those are who are retired, or within 10 years of retirement? Um, any, any pullback in the markets, you don't need to be the first one in. Uh, see if you get a pullback, if you can be a little patient, because I think we will see, and we do every year, see a 10% pullback. Don't be that guy or gal that buys it on a 2% pullback. Let it come to you at a, at a price a little bit lower, and I think you'll be richer for that. Great advice. That's been what I've been telling people, too. So it's good to get verification from my good friend, John Nigerian. John, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate thank you, you being. Thank you, we can't wait to have you back. Jeff, stick around. We'll have you back in just a moment.